Be the Talk, episode 179, featuring Paul Sloan. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Paul Sloan. Paul, are you ready to talk? Certainly am, Nathan. Paul Sloan is the author of 30 books on leadership topics and lateral thinking puzzles. Paul gives talks and master classes on lateral thinking and innovation for corporate clients all around the world. He recently gave a lecture tour in Iran and also apparently Bulgaria, from what Paul tells me. <laughs> Paul Sloan, welcome to the talk. Uh, it's great to be here. Your TEDx Brighton talk is called Are You Open-Minded? And I love how you're describing not just the confirmation biases that we have, not not just some of these things that we're discovering in, in polarized uh, United States of America and elsewhere around the world, but you're really describing the uh, the creation of constructs, uh, which are a set of different imposing beliefs that we build in our own minds just to get through life and how they really box us in much like a puzzle. So, uh, Paul, please take us behind the talk. Exactly right. So I've always been interested in um, lateral thinking and lateral thinking puzzles. I wrote a number of books on those and they've always gone down well. And I got interested in how you use the same techniques to solve the puzzles to solve business problems. And what I ran up against time and time again was that people would make assumptions in any business situation or any other walk of life, certainly with the puzzles, which stopped them from solving it, stopped them from, from seeing new possibilities. And we do it all the time. We can't stop ourselves. And it's it, it's a, an aspect of the of open mindedness. And although everyone thinks they're open minded, you never meet anyone who says, no, I'm closed. My, I'm, I'm sure of everything. I, you know, I'm, I, people say they're open to new ideas and suggestions. But the reality is we're not. And the reality is we're all prisoners of uh, our mindsets and our beliefs and our constructs. Uh, and that restricts us in all sorts of ways. And it's dangerous as well, not just in business, but in the wider world. Paul, it seems like, uh, you know, it's almost like biology or evolution or Mother Nature or God or, or whatever, uh, the universe, whatever you might say. It's like we, we've been evolving as human beings and we were given a fight or flight response back in the cavemen days so that we could run away very quickly. And it seems like these, these constructs, these, these beliefs that we have, are starting to function, uh, in a modern, a postmodern, a hyper, um, hyper interconnected social media world, uh, it, it, it serves us, but only up to a limited place. And it seems like to me to really be able to interface, to really be able to navigate the, the complex, uh, social webs of all of the, the, the different things that we have, that we have to learn how to have some of this nuanced thinking to be able to open our minds back up and realize the potential and not just the potential, but just the plain reality of bias and then start checking ourselves so that we can be able to interface in this modern uh, world. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, exactly right. I think it's, it's a very, very deep conditioning and it goes back to our tribal nature. So if you were a member of the, the Sioux tribe, then the safe assumption was that other Sioux were, were on your side and the Iroquois or the Apache or the, the Blackfoot were, were enemies and not to be trusted. And that was the safe assumption. Uh, and, and it minimized your risk, really. It might not be right all the time, but that was the safe assumption. And consequently, <clears throat> you tend to believe things about your tribe and you tend to be very suspicious about things about the other tribe. And it carries on to this day. And as you mentioned in America, the people who think Trump is great think he's really great and everything he does is great. And the people who think he's terrible see read the same reports and, and see evidence that he's terrible. And it's what we call confirmation bias. And confirmation bias is the mental condition whereby we accept and value evidence that supports our beliefs and we reject or downplay evidence that contradicts our beliefs. And we all do it to some extent or other. Um, and and that's and that was the starting point for my talk, really. And the most important thing is is to recognize that that's going on. Once you realize that's going on, then you can do something about it. If you don't recognize that's going on, then you're limited by that that unconscious bias. 
Talk Universe, you heard it from Paul Sloan. What kind of person do we want to be? I'm not saying throw out your beliefs. I'm not saying, you know, throw out your, your personal uh, faith or, or code or philosophy, but we're hearing what we're seeing. Paul is articulating uh, from kind of the outside in. I know the, the UK isn't necessarily the most uh, unified that it's ever been in these modern <laughs> times, uh, either with Brexit and some of the other things that have been uh, going on. So uh, he's right there in the, in the same boat as us. But what, what kind of people do we want to be? Do we want to be people that just draw the line in the sand and stay there? Do you really want to camp out and have the exact same beliefs on things, not the things that matter the most, but the things that sort of matter or don't really matter in one or two years or one or two weeks? <laughs> what kind of people do we want to be? Do we want to start examining ourselves and start being open to intelligent change? Is that a, is that a nice uh, appeal, Paul, or would you put it differently? It is. And yet, if you look when a politician changes their mind, they're accused of doing a flip-flop, of doing a U-turn, of being weak and flabby. And, and what a hypocrite. You know, 10 years ago, he said this, and now he <laughs> says this. Uh, and how can we believe someone doesn't have conviction? And yet we want people who are courageous enough to change their minds uh, on big issues. And, and on many issues, you know, it's not black or white. There's a whole spectrum. We just had a big debate, a uh, referendum on uh, abortion in Ireland, and it was very, very divisive. And um, the people pro-choice say it's absolutely about a woman's right to choose, and the pro-life people say it's absolutely about the unborn child. And, of course, there's a spectrum. They both have arguments which have some validity, uh, and, and it's a very tough moral decision. And, and it's not absolutely black and white, and it's not something where the winners should be victorious and say, we're right and we crushed you because you're wrong. And they should understand the other person's point of view and try and reach some kind of compromise. Um, and you, you see, you look in the Middle East, you look at Israel and Gaza, you look in the USA, you look at Brexit. You, wherever you look around the world, you see people that are divided into tribes uh, and it's, it's stopping them coming together. It's stopping them understanding the other person's point of view. It's stopping them reaching a peaceful solution. Paul, I, I wonder sometimes if uh, the way things are going, if we're not careful, we're going to have to stop calling it civilization and maybe just replace it and say, hey, those of you that live in polarization. <laughs> <laughs> Did he catch well, you that? See, one of the ironies <laughs> is that it. the internet was supposed to improve the availability of information. The idea was with the mm. in, uh, internet, you'd be able to see all sorts of different things. You'd become much more broad-minded and better informed. But all the evidence is that people on social media just stick in an echo chamber where they hear the views they want to hear and they never go on a different site which would contradict those views. If you always watch Fox News, you always get one view of the world, uh, don't you? Well, for sure. What are some things that we can do other than listening to other great podcasts like Be The Talk that uh, try to explore both sides uh, and other than uh, watching BBC News that I'm a big fan of because it gets all, all kinds of perspectives we never get from our local uh, American-based news? Uh, what, what, are, what are some uh, some ways that you um, uh, get your media so that you can try to keep yourself out of the jail and out of the puzzle, Paul? Um, well, the, the, I would recommend you start by seeing my TED talk, TEDx talk, mm -hmm. which is about, oh, are you open-minded? In there, I give some examples of how people are closed-minded, and then I give some recommendations for how we can open our minds. And uh, the first thing I say is deliberately change your point of, of view, your point of approach, and uh, deliberately listen to contrarian views. So if you normally watch BBC News, try watching Al Jazeera. If you normally read uh, the New York Times, try reading The Guardian. If you normally go to the Bridge Club, go to the Jazz Club and, and just meet different. We tend to meet people who are very similar to us. Um, we, I go to the golf club, I meet men who are just like me, you know, and, and they, they all have similar views. And, and yet down the road, there's a whole different set of people with a different set of views. And um, it, it's important to put yourself about. That's the first thing I would say uh, is to do that, to deliberately uh, change your point of view and deliberately introduce variety in your life, in your social life and in your reading and your viewing in particular. Uh, the next thing I recommend is to introduce the random and introduce random inputs, random words, random things. And I give the example, you know, Hans Christian Andersen, the great storyteller. Uh, his um, uh, grandfather was in a, a lunatic asylum. And he used to go there and visit him and, and um 
his grandmother worked there as a gardener and he'd go and he'd listen to the wild ramblings of the lunatics and it in it infuses imagination and ha you can't get more random than the ramblings of lunatics um and then the other thing i would say is welcome the unexpected and i give examples of where people something unexpected happened and they turned it into something very successful and i give several examples of that in my talk some of them are quite well known others less well known but it's about being receptive to change and receptive to completely new ideas We've been enjoying this uh, riveting interview with Paul Sloan. His talk is called Are You Open-Minded? And in a moment, we're going to pivot over to you, Talk Universe, for the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one -on -one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at classicsontap.com. And we're back with Paul Sloan. It is time for the Blitz Round, where I am going to ask Paul a series of either-or questions related to the prep and performance of his recent TEDx Brighton talk. Paul, are you ready? I am. First question, were you selected to speak or did you apply? I applied. Are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? Uh, I, I'm not a memorizer, but I have a structure. And once mm -hmm. I know the structure in my mind, I take a virtual journey and I, take, I go on that journey and I've rehearsed it several times. So I know the main lines. I know where to pause. I know uh, where to get greater emphasis, but I, I improvise in the moment. Did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? Um, I always get, uh, I'm an experienced professional speaker, so I, I love being on stage. I love speaking in front of big audiences. I get a little bit of nervous, but I, I describe it as excitement more than nerves. I just love the thrill of it, the buzz of it. Paul, what's a, a tip, a technique, or a tool that helped you? Well, I... On this particular talk, I, I was coached. I, I went to see a friend of mine who's a, a speaking coach, and I said, I want you to listen to my talk and tell me what you think. And he listened to it very carefully. They took it apart and put it back together again. And if you've got a really serious talk to do, then get somebody else to listen to it. And he came up with some great suggestions on timing and restructuring it and, and changing the examples a little, uh, putting a little bit more humor into it. Um, and uh, that really helped. So rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. But if you get a chance, rehearse with somebody who will give you some constructive feedback. Here's the uh, the cut for time question. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out? Well, there was loads. I mean, I normally speak at the conferences for about 40, 45 minutes. With the TEDx talk, I was told to do 12. I actually ended up doing a little more. And that's really hard, but it makes you think very clearly. Is every sentence important? Is every word important? Can I express this more concisely? And it's a very useful discipline. Um, and I can only get over three or four points. So let's really focus on those. Whereas with a 40, 45 minute talk, you can ramble all over the place and go down some side alleys. Uh, but with a short talk, you've really got to focus. And it's a very good discipline. What was the, uh, the most unexpected, strange or just plain weird thing that happened to you during or right before you went up to speak? Well, that's, uh, well there are one or two embarrassing things. I've had uh, part of the stage fall down on me. I've had a microphone failure, of course. Uh, I had um, a wardrobe malfunction. And it was a very embarrassing. Uh, so, yeah, I've had a few of those in my time. Um, and you've just got to, to cope with it and um, – and you get often you'll get very strange questions from the audience, too, at the end, which is, is funny. I gave a big talk once about success and leadership and asked afterwards. Uh, I said, are there any questions? And a woman said, yes. Yeah. She said, are you rich? <laughs> <laughs> and I think the implication was, how dare you tell us about how to be successful if you're not rich yourself? <laughs> oh. oh, my. Well, hey, we've been enjoying the Blitz Round. Why, why do we call it the Blitz Round? Because sometimes you get blitzed a little bit. We've been enjoying this with uh, Paul Sloan. His uh, talk uh, at TEDx Brighton is called Are You Open-Minded? And I uh, wanted to let you know where you could go to actually view that talk. If you don't want to type it into YouTube, you can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. 
as well as uh, there being a link there to watch the talk, we can also connect you with Paul at his website. It is destination-innovation.com. Destination-innovation.com right there on the show notes page. And in just a moment, we are going to be back with Paul Sloan for the final word of advice. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at bethetalk.com. And we're back with Paul Sloan. It is time for the final word of advice for Talk Universe. So I would say this uh, to listeners. As you go through life, when something unexpected happens... Don't get annoyed. Get curious. Something's different. Something odd is sending you a message. The universe is trying to tell you something. You know, um, Percy Spencer went for a uh, no, George de Mestral went for a walk with his dog. And uh, he found that his dog's fur and his trousers were covered in tiny plant burrs, little seeds. They were very hard to remove. Most of us would be annoyed. But he wasn't. He was curious. He examined them under a microscope. And he found that the, the, the seeds were hooked into the fabric or the dog's fur. And he invented Velcro. Velcro comes from the French, velour crochet, a hook in velvet. And it was because of something unexpected and annoying that he found and invented Velcro. So when something unexpected happens, don't get annoyed, get curious. Paul Sloan, thanks so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. My pleasure, Nathan. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.